uh, EM with diabetes. When coding, say, an EM encounter and the patient has type 2 diabetes documented in the medical record but the patient is not seeing the provider for her diabetes, is it still listed as a diagnosis? Okay, let, let me take a swing at this one and then Chandra can back me up. Really, <laughs> Chandra is, has done much more of um, uh, this type of thing to be able to answer these questions really quickly than I have. Uh, but this one I happen to know uh, as a risk adjustment point of view, I would tell you any time that a patient comes in that they have a chronic condition, especially diabetes, that affects us, that affects us, affects all the other body systems, you definitely are, are going to have it listed as a diagnosis. Now, one of the things that the uh, providers are struggling with these past few years is because they don't do this. So let's say we have a scenario, which is really hard for us to find a scenario where diabetes isn't pertinent. So if a person comes in with just say a respiratory infection, you know, and um, they just, you know, it's not that big of a deal, uh, but he prescribes an antibiotic and uh, let's say he gives him a little bit of steroid, he's starting to get into the lungs, uh, you know, uh, okay, he may not list that the person is a diabetic. However, now I look at it as the point of view. If you give a diabetic any type of a steroid, it's going to change their blood sugars. So most usually the f provider will say, "Hey, for the next week or the next two weeks, I want you to check your blood sugar every two, you know, uh, twice a day versus once a day or once a week, and um, I want to put you on the sliding scale just in case the steroid affects your blood sugar, you know, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. Um, maybe the person isn't necessarily on insulin, so they don't have to do that. Again, it's probably going to be mentioned, and so therefore it's listed as a diagnosis. Now. The, the thing about it is is don't think of it as a as uh, in the concept of being a coder for the provider on an encounter individual encounter yes you can list it you know that's the answer to the question but think of it for the risk adjustment aspect every time that patient comes in and they have a chronic condition it needs to be listed now if the person comes in because they stubbed their toe and they're diabetic and they uh, so the, the doctor mentions that they're diabetic because they stubbed their toe and healing etc cetera, etc cetera, all the disease processes for it but the person also has COPD well he's not going to list the COPD right he's, it's, he's not there to see the COPD and so the traditional coder is saying well of course we don't want him to list COPD because it has nothing to do with this encounter. But actually, it does for a risk adjustment purpose. Every time that patient sees a, a, a CMS-approved provider face-to-face, -face, every single chronic condition needs to be listed. Are you going to use it to substantiate a CPT code? No. However, you want that risk adjustment coder to be able to say, look, he has COPD. and um, He's, he's on three inhalers and da 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 da, da. You know, the physician doesn't have to address it, but you have to have the fact that the chronic condition is listed and I've got a line I'm showing he's actively being treated by inhalers. And so even though this patient came in for a stubbed toe, I got to collect uh, uh, an HCC for DM and COPD. So my answer is always list them. Um, it, doesn't have to be pertinent to to getting paid. Again, you don't get paid on uh, for regular coding uh, on diagnosis coding. You get paid on CPT, so it's okay to list it. It uh, and then, um, uh, well, I'm stammering. Is that about what you would say, uh, Shandra, or Let would me, you change? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna tweak what you said just a little bit. Good. Um, I absolutely okay. agree, especially for diabetes, it, you're hard pressed to find an example where the patient comes in for some other condition and the diabetes is not pertinent. Now most providers uh, aren't familiar with risk adjustment and I say that depending on what part of the country you work in. Uh, I, mean, I know when I worked well, in California all the, physicians, <laughs> all the physicians I worked with were risk adjustment. They knew it inside and out. In Indiana they look at me like I'm nuts when I start talking about risk adjustment because it's just <laughs> a very small portion of our population. Um, but from a coding perspective, as a physician coder day in and day out, if the provider indicated that the patient came in for an evaluation and management encounter and they were also a diabetic, if that diabetes was potentially going to play a role, um, I'll give you an example. A patient comes in, they're following up on a surgery that they've had, and they're, oh, by the way, they're a diabetic. 
oh wow, yeah, we want to know that they're a diabetic because that's going to affect their healing rate and all of that. The physician does not have to be actively treating their diabetes, but the diabetes may have just come into play in the thought process. That needs to be taken into account because there was more medical decision making done around that diabetic encounter. But the documentation has to substantiate it. That's not to say that it has to have some drawn out, you know, patient has diabetes, here's what they're on, here's blah, 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 blah. But it needs to indicate they're a diabetic somewhere, whether it's in the past medical history. Um, hopefully it's in the assessment that they've indicated they're a diabetic, it's being followed by so-and-so. Um, and if they're on a medication, they need to do a medication reconciliation to identify that not only do I know they're a diabetic, I know what medication they're on, and oh, hopefully in the assessment they've said, oh, by the way, here's who's treating that. Who's, here's who's managing it. That's your best documentation um, to support it in any kind of audit, whether it be risk adjustment or fee-for-service um, auditing. Do you need more medical certification training? Go to www.cco.us. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for updates.